We live a lot of our life online. In fact, 69% of Americans use some type of social media. So some of our best moments, and even the ones we document when we're bored, a lot of those live online. All those moments almost leave a digital legacy of our life. So what happens to all that stuff when we die? You know, those questions always seem so far off until they're not. A lot of what happens after you die depends on whatever platform you're using and the decisions you make before you die. Facebook and Google let you choose a legacy contact, someone who can manage your account after you die. When you fill out the legacy contact, you'll never see the word death, which is kind of fascinating. They thought about every single word so you would you know, feel sensitive enough that you'll actually kind of fill this out. But it's not automatic, so you actually have to plan ahead. Instagram, Pinterest, Snapchat, and Twitter don't offer legacy contacts. And accounts are either closed after six months of inactivity, they can be memorialized, or deactivated after a request from a family member. But there is a way to control your accounts from the grave. There's a service called Dead Social, and you can actually pre-program tweets. Actually, Dead Social also lets you pre-program a Facebook message for if slash when you die, your Facebook friends will see like a video um, with whatever you decided to say to them um, in case of your death, which is like pretty intense. More often than not, if you die before writing a social media will, what happens to your stuff is up to your family. They can submit proof of your death and have your account shut down. Or your friends could turn you into a bot. There's one woman I met who's already trying to do that. She had a friend who passed away, and she took their Facebook posts, Twitter posts, all of their exchanges, their communications online, and she recreated a digital version, like a chatbot of her friend Roman. I just wanted to see what would happen. And a few weeks later, I realized that I'm at a party and um, texting with my dead friend for the last 30 minutes. Not everyone wants to be immortalized forever as a chatbot. But the concept of living beyond the grave raises some interesting questions about your online legacy. Would you want to be completely erased? Or stay a part of people's lives? If you could, would you? If I could pre, if there's a, a service that lets me pre-program tweets to tweet my friends after I die, would that help or would that hurt them? These accumulating number of accounts left by deceased users are increasingly becoming a digital graveyard. With nearly 2 billion users, Facebook has potential to become the largest digital graveyard in the world. Facebook wouldn't comment on how many of their users are deceased. What is clear is that tech companies want us to start talking about death. Back in the day, it was like you wanted to write your, let's say you're dying, you want to write your kids' notes um, and put them in an envelope and, and have them open them at certain times. Tech is just like another medium for what's been happening for decades, for centuries, right? Um, it's a way of memorializing and passing down. And while you hold the copyright, after you die, you're not going to be around to enforce it. If you don't want to become a chatbot or memorialized or deleted, it's up to you to make those decisions while you're alive.